Hey, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Friday here on this program, and you know what that means. we got a lot to get into here today, not the least of which is more WWE cuts. We got a very limited budget in WWE. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but a whole bunch of folks got cut. We'll talk about that when we come back from the break. I know people want to, people always want to rant. I don't know whether there is to rant about this. I mean, it was, it sucks, but we'll tell you all about it when we come back from the break. And also we have got ratings notes. I won't spend a long time, but it seems like every week I have to explain this to everybody. So we'll talk about that very quickly. And uh, also, Becky Lynch and Charlotte, the the online barbs continue, because of course we are on our way to Survivor Series, where they're going to be facing off in in the 2021 edition of the Survivor Series. We'll talk about that here today as well. And we have also got an update on Kenny Omega and his surgeries, the AEW ratings, WWE's changing names. Uh, we had another addition to to Survivor Series. You may not know anything about it because it was announced on social media. We had a guy on our website got really mad because Dave and I did a whole show on Wednesday and didn't mention the Survivor Series once. How dare we? What do you want me to talk about? Like, they literally added nothing since the last time that we talked about the show. But now they have added something, and it was not added on national broadcast television. It was announced on social media. And, of course, what it is is it's another change to the teams that they announced a week and a half ago on social media. They threw out a bunch of names. It was like, here, stick around for an hour, and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you one name at a time. They tell you all the names. You waste an hour of your life because then on the very next show, they start changing the names. Anyway, we'll give you an update on Survivor Series. Take your feedback later on. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I want to quickly mention, if you go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, I have tweeted out the fundraiser site for Whale Scout. I've been plugging the wrestling stuff of late, but the full fundraiser site is up, and I'm plugging it because the holidays are coming, and all of you listening to this right now have other people in your lives, and many of them probably are not wrestling fans. I would bet the majority of them. The fundraiser site here, there are a couple of wrestling perks, but it's like two out of 50. The rest are all, they would make great holiday gifts. So if you have somebody in your life that loves animals, whales, whatever, head up there and you can grab a holiday gift. And 100% of the proceeds goes to Whale Scout, which is a registered 501c3 nonprofit. None of the money goes to me, my wife. Yes, if you want to grab an autographed copy of Death of WCW or 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die, those are up there. And yes, they're not cheap. They're $50, okay? But I'm not making the money. The point is, it's a fundraiser. And so it doesn't make any sense to sell the book for what you can get it on Amazon for. We're trying to raise some money for Whale Scout. So if you want one, they're $50. I will personally, not just my name, but I'll write you a little message inside. And uh, if you want a copy, they're, they're up there. There's some awesome Whale Scout hoodies, and they're already going fast. So if you would like to grab one, the design is up there. You can check it out. And uh, if you love it, grab it while you can, because uh, especially the smaller sizes are going fast, and I think there's very limited uh, numbers of the larger sizes left. So once again, fundraiser.com, F-U-N-D-R-A-Z-R.com, slash Whale Scout. Or you go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez, and it's all up there. Have you ever thought about like uh, doing a PBS style tote bag, or is that too? Dude, old there's school? there's sorts of there's all, there's shopping bags, there's whale shopping bags for those of you that have to pay for your bags at the grocery store. There's mm-hmm. a lot of great stuff, so check it out. Now I got to get to the news here because that's what people are listening for. Yes, there were more WWE cuts yesterday. Apparently, I'm supposed to rant about this. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm 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 disappointed. It sucks for everybody involved. There's a lot of talented people that got cut. And uh, some of the stories are particularly irritating, not the least of which is is the story of John Morrison, because uh, him and Taya, they lived in California, and she signed with NXT, and so they packed up everything. 
and they move to Florida and she ends up in NXT and they literally uproot their entire lives and then they fire her. And then John Morrison is at least still employed by the company and then they fired him. So I've said it before and I someone got mad at me a couple of weeks ago, but let me make this clear. I never said don't sign with WWE. I have never said that. If you want to go to WWE, if you want to say that you work, whatever, like if it's your dream, go for it. But they don't care about you, okay? They just don't. You are a commodity in a business, all right? I'm sure that it's probably harsh to say they don't care about you. I'm sure that if something bad happened to you, they would be very sad. But at the end of the day, you are a commodity. That's it. And it doesn't matter if you uproot your life or, you know, you you uh, your visa to live in this country is attached to working with WWE. It doesn't. Nothing matters. OK, if it comes time to do some cuts like you're you'll be cut just like anybody else. All right. So the list, John Morrison Top Dalla, Ashanti the Adonis, Isaiah Swerve Scott, they fired all, they literally, they called them up, as I talked about a couple of weeks ago, BFAB signed a deal, they cut her a week later. Then, I haven't heard it, but I've heard about it, and I don't know if this is the sole reason, but Hit Row did a song, like a, a tribute song to the fired BFAB. And the next thing you know, they're fired, okay? Now listen, I don't know why they're fired. I do know that there was heat. I don't know if it was strictly over the song. I don't know. I do know that in NXT, there were there were a lot of people that were not fans of Top Dollar. Top Dollar was very good at, uh, you know, I'm not saying everybody didn't like him, but uh, the people that were important in NXT... Uh, your hunters and etc. They did like him. Others did not. I did hear that he had heat when he was in NXT. I don't know if something happened when he. I don't know. Okay, but I was told that part of the reason they were released was due to some sort of heat. Okay, they're all gone. Uh, they've been released. Uh, Tegan Knox. Uh, this is this is a classic. If you remember when she was in NXT, I mean they loved Tegan Knox, and she just kept getting hurt. And they took care of her. And and Hunter always put her over. Well, Hunter's out of the picture. And they called her up. Didn't know what to do with her. Broke up the team. Out of here. Drake Maverick. Remember when he got fired and he did that uh, that video? And like there was so much uh, you know compassion for him from fans. And he did such a great job with... Uh, I don't know how you'd describe it. But I mean, he was sincere. I mean, he was really sad to be cut. And uh, they ended up rehiring him. They did a storyline on television where he won his job back. Well, he got fired again. We got uh, Shane Thorne and uh, Jackson Riker. I mean, listen, nothing against Shane Thorne. I didn't even know he was employed, okay? So a few of these were just people that they weren't going to use. They couldn't figure out what to do with. I mean, Vince gave... This is the thing with Jackson Riker, okay? Jackson Riker said some things on, on, on Twitter uh, that rubbed many people the wrong way. Co-workers, fans, etc. But he's big. So Vince brought him up to television and gave him his singles push. Okay? How many times? How many times have I said this? Vince thinks he knows what he wants. He wants some big. He wants some jacked. He wants them to look good in the airport. He always thinks he knows what he wants. But I don't even know if he knows this. At the end of the day, he actually wants him to be able to work. And Jackson Riker, they gave him the push. He never connected with fans. He had no on-screen charisma. His matches weren't very good. And lo and behold, it actually wasn't what Vince wanted, and now he's fired. Jackson Riker, everybody, is the story of all of NXT right now. He's got a giant list of guys that he loves. Oh, this guy, this, uh, you know, whoever, all these tall, good-looking guys, uh, you know, your whatever's, I don't even remember any of their names, Zion Quinns and this and that, and, you know, all of the, the good-looking, 
you know, young women that then he squashes. Because, like, he wants to push younger people, but then he can't help but squash them. But anyway, he wants something, of course, but he's going to get frustrated when he finds out, wait a second, they can't work? They can't talk? Ah, uh, well, you t- turned out you didn't want all the ones that learned how to work and wa- or work, whatever on the indie scene, huh? Screw them. But they're actually the ones who know how to do this. Anyway, they've all been fired. And uh, I think that's it. So I guess I did do a rant. Well, it's just, it's ridiculous. This company is, is, the wheels are off the wagon. It's totally broken in every way. They're it's, dying of dysentery. Yeah, they <laughs> are. It's like the Western Trail. They're all dying of dysentery. There's a guy at the top. God bless Daniel Bryan. But this guy, everybody, he's out of his mind. He's an old man that does not know how to connect with younger people. He doesn't even know what he wants. Because every time he thinks he knows what he wants, he gets frustrated with it. And now here we are. I mean, how many people do they even have left? Like, at this point, AEW has, like, three times the roster, and WWE's making, like, ten times the money. What is going on here? And they'll still only use seven people. God. Chimney Christmas. Anyway. We just got to go to break early. I'm not going to come behind that and say anything. There's there's no no reason to. Put an exclamation point on everything right there, boss man. Thanks, Mike. Back in the moment with more news. Observer Live. I have a Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. By the way, if you uh, appreciated that unplanned rant, you can always go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez and donate to the Whale Scout fundraiser. Fundraiser.com slash Whale Scout linked up on my Twitter right now. Really appreciate all the donations. There's a lot of great stuff. And, of course, the eBay auctions for the signed Intercontinental Championship belt as well as the Brian and Vinny co-host spot. We had co-hosts twice this week. They were awesome. You could be the next awesome co-host. So check those out right now. And before we get Mike's thoughts on the the WWE cuts, I do want to uh, throw something out there that I actually don't think has been reported anywhere. I think we have an exclusive. And unfortunately, it's not a good one. The, uh, the Butcher tore his biceps on Wednesday. Oh. So uh, all the best to the Butcher. And we were just talking about how great he looked. He's, uh, he's been fantastic, and uh, towards biceps in the match. So uh, hopefully he gets well soon. But all the best to the butcher. Anything else on these cuts, Mike? Well, you know, John Morrison, I thought that's who MSK was going to be searching for. So, you know, with no Miz being there, they I, I don't understand how you could not find a role in some way to have John Morrison on your TV every week especially on a three-hour show, and if not there, down in NXT, I thought he would be a perfect person to maybe be down there as you try to bridge this new environment. And by the way, with NXT, I remember, I mean, just, it's ridiculous. That's one of the reasons I gave up on that show is even if Vince has got a plan for these people, now he's just taking people who are even more experienced with less knowledge of the indies and less time down in that system being brought up to the main roster and then losing interest in them. And that's the case of maybe Hit Row. But the reality, I think, with Hit Row is they're sending a message. You don't get rid of everybody. If you really wanted to hurt, you know, Hit Row... You get rid of BFAB, which they did. You get rid of Ashanti, which they did. And you get rid of Top Dollar. And then you keep sort of Strickland, sort of Scott. And they didn't do that. They got rid of everybody. And that means you just handed over Shane Strickland back to the Indies and back to AEW. It, it is, it blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind that they wanted to go, you know, full bore with this. But. Top Dollar is at least admitting that he called the office. That rumor was out there anyway, that they had wanted to stand up in solidarity with BFAB, and they let their voices be known that they thought it was BS that she was cut. Whether all of them did that or not, it doesn't matter at this point, because at least A.J. Francis is saying that's what he did. And everybody's cut now anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And there has been the thing about where they called up so they could be cut with the 90-day clause. That doesn't make any sense. That that is not at all. That that to me is insane. Is that a possibility that that happened? Yes. But that's to me, that's not absolutely not the case. They brought them all up as a group. 
whatever happened with beef have happened and she went left and then all of this other stuff happened. So that to me is, is out of the picture. Drake Maverick, you know, why they brought him back in the first place and then used him like that, I don't know. But, you know, best of luck to him. He's going to have, you know, he's got so much charisma. He'll be around the wrestling business forever doing something because he, that's just the way he is. Shane Thorne has been sitting there rotting forever. Mikey Nichols left God knows how long ago. You know, I, I don't know what his next step is. I don't even I wouldn't think it would be in the States. I think he probably getting back into Japan is going to be his best course of action probably right now but i don't know because he has laid roots down here in america so I, I at least i assume that he has and all the time that he's been here so that's really all i have to say about the cuts you know just certainly hit row stands out but hit row certainly sounds like it was a hit job it was certainly a it was a message being sent and message certainly top dollar heard it and he's going to continue to do what he has been there to do which was talk which was the reason they liked him in the first place and probably why they ended up getting rid of everybody you know the thing with uh with old top dollar i don't know if it's true if he called the office or not but uh if he did i mean i have respect for a guy like that in a lot of ways because they they fired B Fab a week after signing her, and he was upset about it. And he he stood up for her, and he called the office. It was a dumb idea, and I mean that with all due respect, because you know it's WWE. Like they get a stand for that if that's what happened. Again, I don't know if it happened, but uh, this is a company where, uh, dude, uh, you tow the line. That's it. You tow the line, and if you don't. If you're not Roman Reigns or, you know, Charlotte, I mean, you're rolling the dice, buddy. And uh, yeah. and it got called. Just like uh just like what's his face, the poker player who can't play poker, even though this is um, giving. But the other thing I gotta yeah. say is uh <laughs> you know the other tough thing for um Duke somebody. Duke Hudson. The yeah. other tough thing for old uh Top Dalla is they fired the whole group. And you know who's absolutely fantastic is Shane Strickland. Damn right. And uh, I would not be—I would not be the least bit surprised. I don't know, but I would not be the least bit surprised if AW wanted to snatch that guy up. They, they should. They're but idiots if they don't. Here's the point. You remember I said tweets don't age well. Well, that—that that wasn't one particular tr- tweet. Uh, but uh, do you remember when uh, Top Dollar was was he did that big? I don't know where it was, social media or wherever. But he was going on and on about the Bucks and their shoes and and remember that? Well, and they had he was burying A W yeah. and all of this. Yes, bro. <laughs> Sneak. That was game. a bad idea, dude. Well. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, here's what everyone in this business needs to understand: nothing is forever. Okay, nothing is forever, and you know. People remember things. That's it. So I'm not saying there's no chance that Top Dalla gets signed to AEW, but I mean, of the two of them, I would think there's a very good chance for one of them and a very, very low chance for the other one because of of the circumstances. But but we shall see. Well, for a guy like Top Dollar, like I don't know how much indie work he did, and I know he did some, you know, absolutely in Florida and everything. So, you know, maybe his heart is in this game, but like he was tailor made for WWE in a lot of ways. Of you know, former college football player, you know, at least is growing. I mean, he's got he is charismatic. He knows who he is. I mean, all those things of why you like. Braun Breaker in a lot of ways, although obviously this, you know, Top Dollar doesn't have that pedigree, but he's like a guy that like, because of the style of the indies and what is big right now, you know, how would he, he's going to be a bigger star in WWE than I think he would be anywhere else. And now that's gone. And he does talk a lot and he is sure of who he is, but unless you have the talent of a Leo Rush, unless you have the talent of... You know, I'm trying to think of a guy who kind of goes, you know, in, in and out of places and stuff like that. I, I don't know. You know, it'll be interesting. How much does he really want to be a, a pro wrestler? Because now he's got to do a lot of pro wrestling. One guy we know who can do that, Shane Strickland. That's why they signed him in the first place. That is 
It is insane to me because of, again, who he is, how he looks, his background in the military, his confidence. I mean, you take that whole package and you go, you can't do anything with this guy. You can't think of something to do with him. You can't damn the rest of the group, but we're going to hold on to this person. And I just... To me, AEW, even though they Dude, have a Mike. bloated roster, I know, I know, Mike. but even AEW, even though they have a bloated roster, he's one of those guys that, I, to me, they have to take. Dude, when they were in NXT, Swerve Scott was the leader of the group, and Top Dollar was the heavy. The moment they got called up to the main roster. I know. Top Dollar was now the main guy, and Swerve was the bloke in the background. They, they'd I already know. decided that. So I that's, I mean, what are they going to put him on 205 Live? Well, I'd much know, rather I, he go somewhere and like, but you know. I know what you're saying, and I think it's more of, I was saying it more kind of just up into the air rhetorically, that they would do these sorts of things because the same thing goes for Santos Escobar, and that's the part it would always kill me that we were ripped off. I was ripped off as a fan of Phantasma and Hit Row and a series of matches between Santos and and Swerve. It, it's just it pisses me off, and it pisses me off that like they would bring up Legato if they ever do. And again, all of these things you have at your disposal with this group, fans that you can reach. Yeah, you know, thing, and, and it just I look at the package, the whole thing, the aesthetic, everything, plus the wrestling in the ring, and, and they're not going to know what to do with them, and they're going to be the next ones, you know, if they bother to bring Santos up to the roster and they'll treat, you know, the other two like goofs, and it just, I don't know, it just it bothers me, and he's another guy. As soon as they're released too. You know, I don't know what happens with Mendoza and Wild. You know, they've been out there a long time now. I don't know what the interest would be in them. But like Santos Escobar, Fantasma, you're telling me AEW couldn't do something with him? Anybody could do something with him other than WWE. Just they'll be the next ones. They should sign John Morrison, too. That guy's out of this world. If you only watch WWE and you're like, why would they sign John Morrison? Yes. Bro. This, Look, this, this guy is like was show. so awesome when he was out there working indies and uh, Lucha Underground and everywhere else he was at, and they signed him, and he was right back to 2008 goofball, cornball, yes. working with the Miz, John Morrison. This guy is awesome. He has so much to give. Not only as a single star, but as a bridge for a lot of these kids, because he has been through everything. He's been through every type of experience in pro wrestling. He can help, much like Matt Seidel. Why did they sign Seidel? Why did they sign Big Show? Why did they sign Mark Henry? They sign these people for their experiences and what they can pass on to a roster that's very green, not only in experience, but certainly even being on national TV. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I have Mike Semper, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So only 20 books are available. 10 of Death of WCW and 10 of 100 Things WWE Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die. Four are already gone. So there's only 16 left. So if you want to grab one, go up now. They're 50 bucks each. I'll personally sign all of them. And uh, once they're gone, they are gone. And I uh, should also note that, by the way, if you want to uh, regularly donate to Whale Scout... Uh, Amazon Smile. If you go to Amazon Smile and choose Whale Scout as your uh, nonprofit, a portion of every single thing that you buy on Amazon goes to Whale Scout, and you don't have to do anything. So Amazon Smile is their nonprofit charity uh, deal, and Whale Scout is is up there as part of that uh, registered 501c3. So all the information is up on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. Head up there and check it out. And if you want something, you better grab it while you can. Because it's going fast. When does the crowdfunding begin so we can hear a rant as you Soon. dressed up as Oreo the Orca? Soon. But I don't know when. We've been busy getting that thing up. So We had another interview, this time with Charlotte, on the Ringer's Masked Man show, where she said she feels she's the only adult in the room oh, and that she doesn't want to use sit-down interviews as an outlet to tear down someone else's career. The adults They're are going all in on this one, brother. Uh-huh. You know what? It's one of those things with WWE where <laughs> I'm actually excited for Sunday to see what preposterous thing they do in this match. And like I said yesterday, I still would not be the least bit surprised if we sit through that whole match, Sasha interferes, 
distraction finish, and we just move on to the next match, and they don't do anything. I still do not put that past them. But I, I do feel that something dumb is going to happen, and I'm kind of excited for it. Which reminds me, by the way, if you have not uh, signed up for uh, to become a full-fledged Twitch homie, uh, do it, because we're going to have a Twitch exclusive after the Survivor Series on Sunday. We'll be recapping the show immediately after the pay-per-view goes off the air, only for our Twitch subscribers. Not freeloaders. You have to pay for this one. It'll be live immediately after Survivor Series goes off the air. So uh, get your subscriptions going if you want to hear that one. It's going to be please, fun. Please tell me the transcription of this Charlotte interview is done in the form of like a Pro Wrestling Illustrated press conference. Well, it's a little of everything. It's the same thing. I've been on top since 2015. I know the pressure. I know the criticism that comes with it. More importantly, I have to stay true to myself. I didn't get to where I am without the help of others, without facing Nikki, Sasha, Becky at Mania 32, Bailey. I know in every feud I've had, I am a target. There is a lot that comes with the flair name, and I have never needed to compare myself to someone else on my rise to the top. And then she's talked about how uh, she doesn't understand what politicking means. But said that people think that because she is Rick's daughter, she can walk into Vince's office and lay out what she wants to do that day. She says, if that was the case, don't you think I would have had a longer title run than eight seconds a couple of years ago at Money in the Bank? I don't know. I don't like short title runs. I wish I could hold on to the title a little longer. When I lose it, I want to get it again. Well, I will say that I do feel that people give Charlotte too much criticism. Like, you know, she gets the title 13 times and, and they're mad at her. It's like she's got nothing to do with this. They got an idea. They want to have her be the 16-time champion or 17, whatever. She'll either tie or break Flair's record. They said there's nothing to do with her. It wasn't her idea to do a belt swap. It wasn't her idea to swap the belts and get an extra title run. I'm pretty sure it wasn't her idea to no longer acknowledge the NXT championship she won. I mean, she gets, she gets fair, and she also gets unfair criticism. Like a let lot us, of people. Let us not Including forget. yours truly. Let us not forget Reed Flair. Let us not forget lots of other things that they made her do in the past as she was trying to be a good soldier. So, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> these things balance out. Now, much like Top Dollar, do we hear from Charlotte Flair more than some others? Maybe we do. But... Hey, that's what flares do. And they, you see it with Ric Flair on social media right now or whoever's doing that for him or he's typing in all caps with the periods and all that nonsense. Like, they really love being flares. And there is a sh this whole muddied, you know, what's real, what's not between her and Becky and the what's professional jealousy and what's just true you know per, you know competitiveness between two people i i don't know you know they, they both cock strong with who they are because again with flair and her name and andrade and becky and her situation with seth rollins you, you know i mean and becky again proven star flair I, I, it is it's sad that they have to build this whole thing again, not on what these two can do in the ring and the chemistry they have with each other, but it's all about this nonsense of who could screw the other one and how much of this is real and how much of it is not. This is, And again, once this thing is over with, then what do you have with both of these people? You still have a heel Becky Lynch that people are confused about whether they want to cheer or boo, you know, and then you have, you know, Charlotte, who is going to be what she is. So again, this, the leading into Survivor Series, this is so awful that their top two things that they have, it's this and it's Brock and it's Roman that they can't pay off yet. Strong. You all right? Kenny Omega will be getting multiple surgeries out of the December 4th uh, mega title defense against El Ijo del Vikingo, December 4th at Triple Mania. <laughs> yes, you idiot. Let me continue here. Oh, Meltzer what, what, said, what oh, never mind. Yes, you said that. Now Dom's so going to have to deal with it. I didn't say it. the other way. The other way I'm is the sorry, wrong way. I'm sorry, Dom. Could have been the other C strong. I thought that's, this is a real word. It's like calling a dog, a, you know, female dog. A... Mike, please. Meltzer said Omega will be getting surgeries on his shoulder, knee, and abdomen. 
and is evaluating a septum surgery as well. He's been working with a torn labrum and an abdominal hernia for months. You know what sucks is an abdominal hernia. Because a lot of times you get that surgically repaired and it just breaks. Ooh. Yeah, I've known several people that has happened to. Is that when they're talking about the mesh during these ads that take place on byline well, here? Well, mesh, mesh is used. It, I don't know if it's every time, but I mean, yes. Ooh. At times he's been in great pain. At other times it's been manageable pain. He's done constant rehab and medical treatments weekly to stay in the game as champion on the big stage. He had to be one of the best in the world, given much of the year he held the world titles in AWA Impact, AEW, not AWA, AEW Impact and AAA, meaning he was called to headline both the major AEW and Impact shows at the same time. At times, he privately wondered if he'd done so much damage over the years that his time left in the sport was limited, and publicly on one of the Dave shows was more open and in-depth about his in-ring future. This all in The Observer this week, so if you want more... Check it out, but he's going to be gone for a while. You want to know four smart guys, whether you like them or not, at the end of the day, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, and Cody, because they all have positions that they can all be fired for, obviously, as executive vice presidents with uh, AEW, but... You know, for all of them to see into the future, and Omega knowing his body can't last forever. The Young Bucks, same thing. You know, they've been going for how long they've been going for. Cody, obviously, has got ideas that are outside of pro wrestling on how he wants to, to you know, continue to build his family and carry on his family's name and everything. And you got to give him credit for that because at least there is an exit plan for these guys, and nobody wants to quit. Nobody wants to get out of the ring and miss all of the reaction and the performance and working with your friends and all the stuff that goes with it, but it makes it a lot easier when you know you have the ability to stay in the business, stay being a creator, stay trying to help somehow and be able to save your body so you can actually, you know, hang out and like play with your grandkids down the road. Full gear. Oh, here's our here's our weekly reminder to the peanut brains. Wednesday's Full Gear Fallout edition of AEW Dynamite averaged 984,000 viewers on on TNT, up 7.8% from last week. Highest viewership since October 6th, 18 to 49, 0.37, up 5.7% from last week's episode. Do you know for the last 24 hours how many tweets have gone through my timeline of people doing all of this gymnastics to try to figure out why why can't they break a million anymore? What's gone wrong? What's the problem? Jesus. Brother, it's not going to break a million until the new year. It's not going to break a million as long as it's live on the West Coast. Going live at 5 p.m. on the West Coast outside of prime time is going to result in AEW not breaking a million for the rest of the year. It's not because of who's the champion. It's not because people didn't like this finish or that finish or Omega getting surgery or the Young Bucks facial hair this week. The show is at 5 p.m. on the whole West Coast. You guys know what the West Coast is? It's well, big. it's Washington. Yeah. Washington. It's Oregon. It's California. You guys know how big California is? Big. California is bigger than Washington and Oregon put together. It's and population-wise, about 10 times as big. And then you've got, like, like uh, uh, Nevada, Montana, Montana. And, and, and Idaho, which may be part of Montana for all I know. And I then there's, there's, there's uh, Las Vegas in there. Mm-hmm. The Strip, which Arizona. at one point I thought was all of Las Vegas was just a strip. Apparently that's just part of it. Arizona. You know, people live there, right? You, you the East Mexico? Coasters. You East Coasters think oh, no, only people live on the East Coast. You think that, like, the, oh. the West Coast is still what it was when, when uh, Lewis and Clark were uh, riding that wagon across and getting dysentery. It's Nine not. For gold it's populated. Yeah, it's heavily populated. So if you move a show, if you move a show out of prime time on the whole West Coast, guess what? It doesn't do as well. Golly. My child knows more about this this country than half of you. And she's five. We read books about red foxes and, and jackrabbits. And every, every one of these books about animals that we read, uh, level one blast off, you want to find them on Amazon, they all have a map of where the animals live. And she goes, Daddy, tell me where the animals live. I go, well, my love, this is North, this is uh, uh, America. 
North America. This is USA. And then up here is Canada. That's where Mr. Lance lives. And then over here is Alaska. That's where we announced that you were going to be born. This is Mexico, where my dad swam from. And uh, this is where the jackrabbits live. I explain all of this to her. And she knows the West Coast and the East Coast and, and all that. You guys are baffled. Oh, no one lives on the West Coast. Oh, you move, hey, move AW to, to the, uh, 5 p.m. on the West Coast. It should do 1.2 million viewers. No, it doesn't work like that. Quit disrespecting my coast. West Coast for however they do it. The youngsters. Well, I, uh, I will continue because I have an East Coast bias uh, that all of civilization re- revolves around here. But I will say this. Maybe you're... No, uh, I did not eat an edible. I'm absolutely completely sober. Maybe your teachings to your child were better than, than mine have been, where you're reading about red foxes and i was playing red fox records for avery all i do so is I dad's that may be 24 7 that's oh sure did you, you know by the way did you know by the way that uh wwe did a bunch of name changes oh, yeah. and none of it matters except for uh, they they gave three referees new names why hey you know those three guys and no one knows their names let's give them new <laughs> names <laughs> yeah what what are you you're serious i swear to god <laughs> i used to write i used to write that uh frank a gotch thing in figure four weekly and it was all like parody articles i stole it from the onion and now it's like why even bother the actual yeah. stuff that they do is funnier than anything i could ever write back in a moment observer live so don't wait don't hesitate you know the other thing too is these uh awesome whale scout hoodies we're getting one order And I'm going to wear that hoodie on this show one of these days. And you blokes are going to go, my God, look at that awesome hoodie. Where'd you get it? Where can I get one? You know what I'm going to say? You can't. You snoozed and you loosed. Mm -hmm. So go up there right now at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. The link to the fundraiser site is there right now. Uh, Fundraiser.com. They spell it a weird way. So go to my Twitter. Uh, With a Z or something? Yeah. It's it's like WWE. It's like the name of a team. Fundraiser. (laughs) But you can check it out at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And uh, grab some stuff, because it's going quick. By the way, uh, SmackDown's tonight. Oh, yeah? You don't need to watch it, because everything's on social media. They've added uh, Tony Storm to the Women's Survivor Series team. They did it on social media. So that saves me having to watch a show tonight. Well, she's never on TV anyway, so... Yeah, and I might add, by the way, not only are... uh, uh, I think it'll be me and Craig and Lance... Uh, the post Survivor Series show on Sunday, uh, only for our Twitch subscribers. You must be Man, a subscriber like, to the Twitch deal. Like a wholesome sandwich, right there. Yeah, but I think that uh, I think Andrew is going to Survivor Series, and so I'm not 100, percent but I'm about 95 percent that Observer Live on Sunday afternoon is going to be Mike and I. For those of you that miss Sunday calls, that'll be Sunday. So I'll let you know on my Twitter at Brian Alvarez. If you haven't figured it out already. You need to uh, follow me, at Brian Alvarez. I'm going to have Jared put up, uh, at Brian Alvarez, on that little crawler. The crawler that goes like that, yeah. right there. How about at, at Semper Vivi as well, too? Uh, you right, right, right across right At there. Brian Alvarez is the important one. But maybe we'll put yours up, too. There's room well, on that crawler. Thanks. Uh, but we do charge you. It's valuable real estate. I want to thank all of my uh, top-tier Twitch homies, bottom-tier as well. And uh, callers and listeners, everybody in the studio, we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.